Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the complexities of building your own game engine. People often ask me, why don't more studios just make their own game engine instead of relying on Unreal Engine, Unity Game Engine, or all the other game engines out there, right? On the surface level, it sounds simple for a layman. Just render some graphics, add physics, and you're good to go, right? What more can there be? But this is not the reality. So today in this video, I want to talk you through what really goes into it. And I've made this video by having a chat with one of the developers that has actually created their own engine. It's called Zimension 3D. It's a browser based engine. I've also done an extensive video with him. His name is Zishan. And, um, you know, I had a chat with him to understand what really goes into the complexities of building a game engine. He wrote back to me a couple of points. Here are the pointers that he told me. Number one, asset management and configuration. Now, let's start with the basics. Asset management. Every game needs textures, sounds, 3D models and animations. But an engine has to decide how these things are imported, stored and configured. If you give users too much control, it becomes overwhelming, too little and it feels very restrictive. The challenge is creating libraries and templates that make sense while keeping configuration simple and user friendly. Number two, physics and collisions. Now physics and collisions, most engines use existing libraries like PhysX or box 2 but these are often heavy and not optimized for portability. So some custom engines build their own lightweight systems tailored for speed and efficiency. The trade-off, you need to carefully handle edge cases like fast moving objects clipping through walls without slowing down the whole system. Number three, performance on the web and mobile or VR. Now performance is another nightmare, especially if you want games to run on the web, mobile and even VR. That means dealing with very tight memory budgets, maintaining stable frame rates and making sure load times are as short as possible. An engine developer isn't just coding features. They are fighting a constant battle against performance bottleneck. Number four, automated pipelines. Imagine every time you import a 3D model, the engine automatically optimizes it, compresses it and prepares it for runtime. Users don't have to tweak dozens of hidden settings. They just have to handle a few parameters that truly matter. Automating these workflows saves creators from hours of frustration. But for engine developers, it means writing complex background systems that no one ever notices until they break. Number five, beginner first UX. And here's something really interesting. Beginner's first UX. Most people think that just copy Unity or Unreal. But those engines were never really designed for first time creators. If you're designing a new engine today, the goal might be to build a user experience that welcomes beginners, simplifying menus, reducing jargons and offering more guided workflows. That's way harder than what it sounds. Number six, feature cost. Every feature in the engine comes with a hidden cost. Add something very simple. Let's say a new type of material shader. And suddenly you need new UI panels, new backend logic, extra documentation and more bug fixes. So scaling an engine is like juggling. The more balls you add, the harder it gets to keep everything balanced. Number seven, real time state management. Now, if your engine supports multiplayer or collaborative editing, you hit another beast, real time state management. That means syncing data across multiple users with minimal latency. Imagine two people editing the same level at once. It has to feel seamless. But behind the scenes, the engine is constantly reconciling conflicts and updating states across all the devices. Number eight, cross device input. Touch screens, controllers, keyboards, VR hand tracking, an engine needs to make all of them feel consistent. For the player, it should just work. But under the hood, that means writing endless layers of input handling logic so every action translates correctly across all the devices. Number nine, publishing and distribution. Another challenge is publishing. It's not enough to just let people export games to PC or mobile. A well-designed engine 
ensures that games run natively on its own platforms too. That means tighter integration, better performance and a more controlled ecosystem. Number 10. 3D Standards Of course, 3D assets are a world of complexity of their own. Every imported model has its quirks, wrong scales, mismatched animations, inconsistent naming and a strong engine needs a pipeline that auto-corrects these problems. Otherwise, creators spend half their time fixing imports instead of making games. Number 11. Expanding Asset Library And finally, there's the never-ending task of growing an asset library. Beginners expect ready-to-use characters, environments, and props. So engine developers have to constantly expand and curate their 3D libraries while making sure that these assets actually work within the engine's systems. So these are some of the complexities of making a game engine. So next time you're looking at an engine like Unity or Unreal or even newer players like Dimension 3D, you're not just looking at a piece of software. You're looking at thousands of small, invisible design decisions, each one balancing performance, usability and scalability. That's why making a game engine is not just about coding. It's about creating a platform that empowers creators while hiding all the insane complexities under the hood. And honestly, that's what makes this such a fascinating challenge. Now, if you found this breakdown helpful, let me know in the comment section. And also let me know, would you ever want to try building your own game engine? If you like this video, hit the like button. If you're finding my channel for the first time, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on my next videos. My name is Nikhil Manakar. I'm a game developer by profession and on my YouTube channel, I make videos around games and game development. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, take care.